so the next thing that's in your program or that you might have seen um, was a performance that was slated to be a performance by the group Internet. Um, but I've got to apologise, just last week they've um, pulled out and they've cancelled. Um, so, yeah, I, re I really do apologise for anyone who was really hanging out to see them. Um, I'd just maybe like to explain what happened there. We did, um, we invited Diego Chamey to be a part of the festival. He's an Argentinian performer uh, who lives in Berlin now. And he suggested that he might do something with a collaborator of his called Sean Robinson Davies uh, from the UK. And they work together under the name Internet. Uh, now, from the very beginning, they said that they wouldn't be able to make it out here um, because it's just too far and too expensive and all the, you know, funding woes that we have. Um, so they were going to make a work to be performed out here by somebody. Uh, one of the festival organisers, John Wilton, suggested that Rishan Singh might be a good candidate to perform that work. He's based in Berlin, so it would, you know, kind of work uh, for rehearsals and whatnot. Um, and then there was this epic, epic email correspondence that, you know, maybe stretched back over the last six months or so, uh, that culminated with them pulling out of the festival. Um, so, again, I've just got to apologise to anyone who's really hanging out to see that set. Uh, in its place, we've... I'm going to read out this correspondence, because it's, it's just like... And it's like... Um, yeah, so it all <laughs> it all started it all started when John sent an email to Diego and Sean CCing Rishan, saying, "Hey Diego, Sean Rishan, I'll, I'll just sorry I should just explain we've put together some slides of the people involved in this um, involved in this so you kind of get a, an idea of who's saying what." Okay. Uh, hey Diego, Sean Rishan. So I was thinking today about who would be a good candidate to perform Internet's work for the festival and thought maybe Rishan could do it. How do the three of you feel about that? Cheers, John. <laughs> we didn't hear anything from Diego or Sean, so John sent another mail a month later. Hey guys, any word on this stuff? We are currently in the process of finalising the program. John. To which Diego replied, Hi John, sorry for the delay. Sean and I are still working on the performance and we don't know what kind of person we will need yet. I'm not working with musicians at the moment, but thanks anyway for, su for suggesting Rishan. We'll keep thinking about what sort of performer we need, but happy to hear if you have any other suggestions. Best, Diego. Rishan then emailed, Hey Diego, I have experience performing non-musical pieces, so I don't see the problem, but I guess that's not the point, is it? To which De Diego replied, Hi all, Rishan, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> And Rishan wrote back, I think you do. <laughs> we, weren't we, we weren't sure at all what was going on here. Um, but about a week later, we got another mail from Diego saying, Hi John, sorry if you got in the middle of this. Seemingly there is some personal stuff that is getting in the way. But Sean and I are trying to keep it professional. Anyway, no worries, we'll find someone else. Best, Diego. And Rishan replied, sorry guys, I was just joking. I hope everything goes well. Maybe Sam would be a good alternative. Cheers. <laughs> this brought Sam Pettigrew into the conversation. Diego. Yeah, maybe Sam. In fact, anybody who's not trying to sleep with my girlfriend should be fine. That's a joke too, by the way. And then Sam joined in with, Diego, I don't know who your current girlfriend is, but I would totally sleep with her. <laughs> also would do the piece, Sam. To which Diego said, that's very kind of you, Sam, but seemingly someone else is on the list before you. And about the, pit, and about the piece, we're still working on it, but we'll let you know as soon as possible once we know what skills, etc., the performer will need. At this point, we were pretty confused, <laughs> didn't really know what to make of these emails. Uh, Rishan then replied, making reference to Diego, I thought everybody knew who's known for sleeping with other people's girlfriends. And Diego replied, someone sounds resentful. <laughs> Rishan, great, now everything I say will sound resentful. Great way of empowering people, Diego. <laughs> anyway, let's just leave it. 
But then a day later, Rishi wrote, Rishi wrote again. And by the way, I was happy to work with you, Diego. It was you who had a problem working with me. You don't work with musicians. You work with musicians all the time. To which Diego responded, thank you for deciding when the conversation is over. P.S. John, I got an email saying that the performances shouldn't be longer than 30 minutes. It's no problem for us, but it would have been great to have had this info before. As you know, our work is scripted and therefore not as flexible as an improvised music set. To which John replied, explaining, Hi, the 30 minute limit is more of a guideline for improvisers to prevent the nights from going too long. If you want more time, please let us know how much you want and we'll see if we can fit it in. Sean, Diego's collaborator, then wrote, Hi Rishan, hi John. I don't know how or why this is happening here. Rishan, I don't know your work, but we'll probably need an actor with some experience in learning lines, etc. But if there are personal problems between you and Diego, it's probably best to forget about John's suggestion. You want to explain what's going on? Sean, P.S. John, 30 minutes should be fine. Thanks for letting us know. Sean turned out to be a pretty reasonable person. And for a moment we were quite relieved. But then things got weirder. Diego wrote, basically, I met Rosita some months after she broke up with Rishan, and now we're living together, and seemingly he can't accept they are no longer together, and it's difficult for Rishan to see that I'm not comfortable working with him, given the current state of affairs. To which Rishan replied, just to be clear about the facts, Rosie and I were still together when Diego started to see her, but actually I don't feel comfortable talking about personal stuff here. If I have something to say, I'll talk privately to Diego. By this point, we were, we were out, didn't know what to make of this, so I wrote a private email to Rishan. <laughs> Is this correspondence between you and Diego serious? And Rishan replied to me, yeah, I don't know what his problem is. Shian intervened again in the conversation with this email to everyone. Hey, have you guys heard about nonviolent communication? <laughs> By this guy, Marshall Rosenberg. He speaks about using language in exactly the opposite way you guys are talking. The theory suggests that one of the main problems we have when we communicate is due to the fact that we attribute how we feel to the actions of others. But actually, people cannot make you feel anything. Your feelings stem from needs. So when you feel something, it's, become, it's because one of your needs is not being met. Is being met or not being met. Rosenberg says we could all make life more wonderful if we could understand our emotions in terms of our needs and try to accommodate people's needs with our own behaviours, whilst also making sure our own needs are met. Maybe you could check it out. Diego, I just booked tickets to Berlin for the second weekend in November. Shall I bring the stuff for the rehearsal, or do you think we can manage without it? Hi guys, yes, Rosie has talked to, to me a bit about this non-violent communication stuff, and I think it's problematic in many ways, not just in its false dichotomy name. But anyway, I'm not interested in discussing how we can be more loving in our communication either. I'm not the one with the problem here. Yeah, some relationship stuff happened, but everything is fine. I don't have a problem with Diego and Rosie being together, but Rosie and I are good friends, and I guess that's creating some misunderstandings. I don't know what Diego's problem is now, but I didn't expect him to let it get in the way of a possible collaboration. A few months ago, I saw a YouTube. Uh, a few months ago, I saw a couple of YouTube videos about nonviolent communication that I found inspiring. Personally, I think the system has a lot to offer. I'd love to use it more often, but for some reason it doesn't happen. Anyway, I have no problem with Rishan and Rosita being friends. I just don't want to feel that we're kind of competing for Rosita. And Rishan, as far as I understood it, you guys were no longer together when me and Rosie got together. Did Rosie tell you that? You don't have to answer if you don't want, I'm just curious. Diego explained, Mike did. <laughs> he said, he said, Rosita wanted to go back to Australia and therefore you guys decided to stop the relationship. Diego, what do you expect if you get your information from Mike? <laughs> Rishan, I understand your reluctance to these kind of communication systems, but I have the feeling we always use systems when we communicate in one way or another. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you agree with the non-violent communication or not, it could just be a way of being more aware about the models we do use. 
Anyway, it was just a comment. We don't need to go into it. It's just that the way you and Diego speak to each other, attributing each other blame in particular ways. Like Rishan, when you said, Rosie and I were still together when Diego started to see her. Or the way you say, Diego started to see her, sounds very unidirectional. As if Diego was solely responsible when actually both started to see each other, if you know what I mean. Agreed, there are different ways of expressing the same thing. By using different sentence constructions, different aspects of a given situation are emphasised. So basically, Rishan saying, I started seeing Rosie, is just a way of blaming me. Hey guys, in non-violent communication, they use the form, when you do X, I feel Y. So for example, you could say, when you arrived late, I felt ignored. So Rishan, if we apply that to your sentence, you could, you could say something like, when Diego and Rosie started to see each other, I felt angry. Then you could also back up the feeling with a need. So you could add, because I was needing to be loved and accepted. The trick is learning to identify our needs without making judgments about others and how they have wronged you. Rishan, do you feel like that sentence could work for you? Shan. Then being together is not a problem for me and it doesn't make me angry. And anyway, this non-violent communication sounds like some kind of semantic hygiene. When I said Diego started to see Rosie, I didn't mean to sound unidirectional. It's just a way of talking. The point is that we've been together for four years and we are still very good friends. And that's not a language game, that's a fact. Diego, I don't know why Mike would say that me and Rosie weren't together. You probably misunderstood him. Okay, Rishan, so if you're not feeling angry, are you feeling something else? Please, you should be comfortable to express your feelings. P.S. I have attached a needs pinwheel to help you identify your needs. To which Rishan said, Sean, I am feeling hungry. Sean replied, that's not a feeling, Rishan, that's a need. I hope your need for sustenance, food and nourishment has been met. But I think that it will help if you tell us how you are feeling. At this point, Sam wrote to Rishan, John and myself, Guys, is this serious still? It's a joke, right? Or material for a show? Or a performance in itself, right? Rishan, have you met Sean? I can't imagine anyone who you know asking you this shit. Please express your feelings, Rishan. <laughs> to which Rishan replied, I don't know what their deal is. I just got dragged into this email exchange by Diego. It might be a performance, or something for a performance, or it could be Diego behaving like a complete prat. I don't know him well enough to tell the difference. Could any of you even imagine doing a piece out of it? Or in any case, ideas about what to reply? And no, I've never met Sean. And then Rishan replied to Sean on the main thread. Maybe you should tell us about your feelings and needs, Sean. I am feeling frustrated because my, need for being ab because my need for being able to understand other people is not being met. Your need to understand people means you're demanding things of me that I neither feel comfortable giving nor feel like you even have the right to know, seeing, you, seeing as you're pr practically a stranger to me. Rishan, what if you see Sean as a mediator? Maybe that could work better for you. I don't see the point of this. Rosie and I started talking... Rosie and I already talked about your attraction to each other and I supported her to explore that more with you. And actually, I didn't even know there was a problem. Everything was drama-free until now. And anyway, Rosie is going back to Australia in two days. But maybe it's good that this came up so we can clear the air. Sorry, John, for put putting you in the middle of this. The fact that Rosita is going to Australia won't make the problem disappear. And anyway, she's only going to check it out again. She might come back to Berlin soon. And if she doesn't, then I'll go join her there. John, I'll let you know if that happens. It'd be nice to meet. You know, guys, this actually doesn't have much to do with Rosita. It's best if we stay focused on the conflict between the two of you. Diego, you also blamed Rishan when you said, seemingly, he can't accept they are no longer together. It's a pity that hard feelings get in the way of communication instead of helping it. What I find interesting about nonviolent communication is that it helps me to understand my feelings and needs and express them directly in a way that is not a reaction to another person. I showed Rosita some of these emails and she said empathy is also a very important part of nonviolent communication that we haven't mentioned. She was also concerned that we are objectifying her. 
but I don't think that's the case. And another thing I recently discovered is E-Prime. Have you guys heard about it? It's short for English Prime. It's a way of avoiding the use of the verb to be, like in these examples. The electron is a wave, which in E prime would be the electron appears as a wave when measured, when measured with instrument one, and the electron is a particle, which in E prime would be the electron appears as a particle when measured with instrument two. Electron is a wave and electron is a particle are contradictory statements, but the two can exist alongside each other because they make clear the conditions for the truth of the statement. Another example would be Beethoven is better than Mozart, which in E prime would be in my mixed state of musical education and ignorance, Beethoven <laughs> seems better to me than Mozart. Sean, do you think this can be useful? Sam then wrote to everybody, hey everybody, I don't know what kind of language this is going to be, maybe it's Sam Prime. So, Diego Rishon, you guys live in the same city, I think you were struggling with email talk, so maybe perhaps if you have beefcakes with each other, you could grab a coffee and speak it out. I suggest Bonanza Coffee House, if they are still good, although I'm sure there are better, cooler cafes in Berlin now. And. Diego and Sean, I guess the important thing for us to know is what kind of actor you need and what skills they might need to perform your work so that we can begin to start that hunt. As I find actors to be tricky characters, I would rather get that kind of thing sorted sooner rather than later. If it was someone who was already performing at our festival, that would be amazing as we run on the smallest budget imaginable and the more people involved, the harder and more expensive things get. I'm pretty sure that everything will be fine. You are all some of the most intelligent human beings I know. Assuming on your behalf, Sean. Okay, kiss. Diego then replied, Hey Sam, I didn't notice you've been receiving all these emails too. Sorry. I don't know what a beefcake is, but as you know, I don't eat meat. And I guess Rishan... And I guess Rishan at this point, after some months in Berlin should have become a vegetarian too. Anyway, what I understood this year, you are not taking part in the organisation of the festival, right? So please don't worry. Sean and I started conversations with some actors in Sydney and we plan to decide upon someone soon. And I agreed with John that Sean and I will pay the person. In my present mixed state of linguistic education and ignorance, I apparently managed to write this whole email in E prime. <laughs> In my present mixed state of linguistic education and ignorance, E prime seems to be a complete load of bollocks. <laughs> anyway, what on earth are we talking about? And why should I mediate everything I say with indir indirect language like appears, blah, blah, blah? Of course it appears to me like to be such and such if I am the one saying that, if I am the one saying that something. Diego, what is it about Rishan and Rosita's relationship that you don't want to exist anymore? You mentioned competing. What would that involve in concrete terms? What need would this support you to have met? I don't mind Rishan and Rosita's relationship at all. In fact, I'm totally for free love, polyamory, or however you want to call it. What bothers me is to feel that there's a kind of tense game being played under the table. It's difficult to be concrete. concrete. I guess it happens when things are not totally in the open, or only half said, you know? I don't understand why things should be like that then intentions become suspicious, people start lying to each other and mutual trust gets undermined. And that makes me feel sad and annoyed because I don't see any, any reason for things to be that way. Okay, but the problem is that if you can't be concrete then it's very difficult to talk about the problem and it runs the risk of existing only in your own head and that's when misunderstandings start. I've been trying to think of a concrete example but nothing comes to mind. But I feel it's there. Do I have to accept that what I feel is my own problem, I don't see that as a solution. Hmm, tricky. I've been thinking about what Sam said, and I think that meeting up for a coffee would be a good idea. I heard about this practice called restorative circles, where people from a community who are in conflict meet up and talk about their experience of the conflict by identifying how they felt at the time it happened, how they feel in the present moment, and what they would like to happen next. Usually there is a host, someone from the community that steps in. The idea is to empower communities to have the skills to manage their own conflict in the way they want to. If we tried it out, I could be the host. 
But Diego and Rishan, maybe you guys already talked it through together. In fact, we haven't. This is the first time we've spoken. Smiley face. Okay. Well, what do you think? I will be in Berlin from Friday. Maybe we could meet up and try it. I wouldn't mind. Rishan? I'm in Australia right now. But Diego, if you really have a problem and want to meet, then we can, then we can when I'm back in Berlin on the 13th of November. Great. I'm still there on the 13th. Shall we meet at that Turkish place we went to last time, Diego? What's the address? The place is Simici, Al Alberta Strasse 97. Wednesday the 13th, let's say 5pm. Yeah, great. Rishan? Okay, fine. On the 14th, the day after they had arranged to meet, Sean sent this email. Hey Rishan, the meeting was really good. I found it really helpful. It's such a shame you couldn't make it. <laughs> it's such a shame you couldn't make it because it was a really great process. Is everything okay with you? P.S. Guys, I saw your post on the festival's Facebook page and you only mentioned Diego's name. Uh, we are incredibly excited to have Mark Barron and Diego Chami involved in the 2014 festival. Check this out from a little while back. Sean then asked, uh, are you ashamed of me? I'm trying to get into the improvised music scene and it's just so difficult. It would really help me if you could mention my name to people, even if it's just by word of mouth, just casually in passing conversation. She also, she also commented, I'm in it too, this is my website, www.shaanrobertsondavies.com. Following this, Diego wrote about his experience of the meeting. Hi Rishan. Yeah, too bad you couldn't make it. Sean found someone to replace you in the circle and it went really great. <laughs> they call it semi-simulated circle, apparently. Like you can actually replace the people who don't want to take part and the thing works anyway. The guy even looked a little bit like you. Hee <laughs> hee. Maybe that helped. Sean took the picture attached. Anyway, I feel, felt really comfortable talking to him, and now I feel very relieved. Man, I just want to tell you, I'm very sorry if I caused you any pain. Talking through how I was feeling allowed me to understand you much better. I love you, man. Send you a big hug. Hope you were doing well. Let's get together sometime soon. Looking forward. Are you going to Johnny's concert on Saturday? Maybe see you there. Big hug, Diego. Hey Diego, that's totally great. Rishan, do you feel better since? I felt there was a real shift in energy and maybe that changed things for you somehow. Rishan didn't reply and then we didn't hear anything for a couple of weeks until Sean wrote again. Hey Rishan, I guess you must be busy at the moment, but I just wondered if you had any more thoughts on how you were feeling. It would be great to hear from you. After which there was another couple of weeks silence. Then Diego wrote this. Hey guys, I've been thinking a lot since the semi-simulated restorative circle we did, and I've been feeling really good about my open about my relationships with other people. I feel much more open. But I've also been doubting my past performances, or at least the way Sean we script everything so tightly. It makes us very close to the performance situation. Do you know Claire Cooper? She's another Australian musician who used to live in Berlin. She sent me this link to a comedian called Neil Hamburger and said I reminded her of him. When I saw the video I thought, wow, how the hell did I get to this point? This isn't where I wanted to be. Anyway, all this made me think over my life and I've been thinking about going away on a trip, uh, going away for a while on a trip somewhere, though I'm not sure where yet. I think it is important for me right now. I know you will probably be annoyed, but I just need a break from art. I need to explore real life. How would you guys feel if we cancelled for the Now Now Festival? Peace, Diego. At this point, we just did not know what to say. And Sian wrote again before we replied, Hey Diego, what can I say? It would have been nice if you could have contacted me personally to let me know. Anyway, I'm glad you were feeling good. I'm feeling annoyed. 
that you want to cancel as it doesn't meet my need for reliability. <laughs> we invested so much time in creating our performance, but despite these feelings of disappointment, I also believe that prioritising our well-being and relationships over art is an important thing, so I respect your decision. What do you say, John? So this was last week, and to be honest, we were pretty pissed off. Um, so John wrote, Well, what can I say? I can hardly believe that this is real. I'm sorry Diego is taking a break from art, because he's pretty good at it. And frankly, it's pretty unprofessional. It leaves the festival in a really tight spot. All of us were really looking forward to this set. But anyway, good luck with real life and shit. <laughs> The last we heard from, was from Diego, and he wrote, I don't know what to say, all I feel is love. <laughs> 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 <laughs>